What is up and welcome to this Boy and the Heron review. I've been on a somewhat a Studio Ghibli kick as of late as I wanted to wash the awful memory of watching Earwig and the Witch from my mind. We'll take this one. Which, to be honest, yes, this did work. And also watching Spirited Away for the nth time did work. Animation is in a bit of a state of flux at the moment as the House of Mouse flounders with the soulless tripe like Strange World and Elemental have surface level messages and really forgettable design and animation. Really the return to three uh, kind of 2D hand drawn animation after the mess of 3D has worked here as well. If you look through their back catalogue and compare it to modern Disney stuff, it looks absolutely timeless. Just like if you went back and watched classic stuff like Snow White, Cinderella, etc. Here the art is just stunning, but it did look a bit jerky. There was a bit of a frame rate thing. I'm not too technically minded, so I don't know if that was the, the cinema there that I was watching it in, which isn't really that good to be honest. I'm hoping for an IMAX sometime soon. But, however, I would accept the return to the hand-drawn 2D animation so that this can continue. And I hope Disney, in their rebuild era, do work towards building more hand-drawn as it just... You look at stuff like Princess Mononoke, Spirit Away, things like that, it just looks beyond timeless. The story did surprise me here, as I wasn't expecting a multiverse story. I try to avoid trailers as much as I can, but, well, sometimes you're at the cinema, you are a captive audience. I try and avoid the trailers as much. But seeing this from Miyazaki was a surprise. It worked, mostly. But really the story that he uses of a child or a teenager, young young adult or whatever, finding their way in the world of finding a cool, new fantastical world it's a then, then by and large that's what most of the movies are but really the story setting he uses just just it works and if it, it works well as i'll get through the story of the review i will explain more but the through line it works i love the story of a kid in a world of awfulness during war and well he wanted to fix his life he wanted to make do with what he had and this this worked and i found it fascinating which no doubt comes to mind with mizaki's own life which we've seen his backstory like his early life shown through through art many times in wartime japan but i did find the main story of um the the main kid's ancestor wanting to find a successor um rather lacking and the story of the stone and the guardian and the great uncle become very very jumbled as we got more into it and i felt myself passively watching the minute they fall through the tower i was a bit lost at times and i was like are you going to tell us exactly where this is going to go but it, i was gripped i will say that and there are times where you can just you may lack the story it may be lacking but i was lost in the world of uh the parakeets and, and and the fantasy of it all and i think that it the whole thing was him wanting to find out where his new mother is and then he learns his old mother is was alive in, you know in a certain way and it felt anticlimactic when 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 they he first saw her but i was gripped at the end with the encounter with a younger version of his mother which i think should have been a bigger deal uh we're throwing many different lore dumps and it felt like a hodgepodge doing things of like a Charlie in the Chopped Up Factory type beat. And I think it should have been more of a Wizard of Oz or Alice in Wonderland type beat. But Miyazaki's the genius and you've got to leave it to him. So motivations were, like I said, they were all over the place and people are doing things and they, the ending felt lacking and we don't really see much of what the world is. But all of that aside, I did have a great time watching this. It was a gorgeous thing. And while I put it as 3.5 out of 5 on Letterboxd, and there's, I've got some questionable choices on there, I don't think that reflects the movie's charm and the passion that has clearly got into it. 
And the voice cast, I did watch the dubbed version. I, I tried to watch anime and, and Ghibli stuff in, in subtitled, but there was no option. This was like one... Once in a blue moon, I got a chance to watch this. I've never seen a Miyazaki movie in the cinema ever due to uh, my cinema being rubbish. But let me know what you think down below. Did you enjoy the movie? Did you hate it? Do you disagree with me? Let me know. See you soon. Goodbye.